Okay, here we are after uh, day six at the party. Uh, had a great time. It's morning, and uh, we're getting ready to go ahead and take off. Uh, I just happened to be sitting on top of one of these towers, uh, video, videoing the little town and everything, and uh, I don't think the lady realized from the bridge uh, that I was sitting up here. Uh, but she went ahead and uh, there was a boat coming and she went, went ahead and closed down the road and everything and started lifting the bridge up. So I kind of just sat there, waited, figured, well, too late for me to come down, but that's okay. You can see this, the bridge is going to be starting to rise here shortly. Uh, I went ahead and added part of the bridge coming up and now it's all the way up. Uh, figured, well, you don't need to see it coming all the way up, but anyway, uh, and here comes the boat, it's going to come through, and then the bridge will come down, and then I'll be able to walk down the stairs and, and get back out, uh, I didn't want to mess things up for her, or let her know that I was up here or anything, but I figured, you can see the platform on the opposite side of the, uh, of the uh, canal there, where the stairs are, that's where I was standing on the opposite side of the, the canal. Uh, I was standing up on that platform. And that's it's an observation place, so you can see. And uh, right after uh, the boat goes by, she go ahead and starts lowering the bridge back down. And then once it's all the way down and secure, uh, I went ahead and went down the steps. And... Uh, I don't know whether she even noticed I was up there or not, but anyway, it happened. Uh, it's um, one of the boats has already left, or is going to leave. Uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to, uh, one of them has an uh, appointment or something. They, they left early. Uh, we're going to be following the other two boats here shortly. Uh, I'm just waiting for them to pack up their things, and I'm ready to go. Everything is packed, and... Uh, everything is on board the boat, had my breakfast, had my coffee, so I'm good to go. Uh, this is, uh, you know, like I said, a small little town uh, that you find anywhere on the Erie Canal. Uh, and here uh, is the pathway of one of the canals where they used to carry, where the horses and the mules used to pull the, the, the barges down the canal. As you can see, it says states on there that it was an, it's been enlarged twice now, uh, so they it's been made wider a couple of times. So some of the original walls are gone, but there are still some of the regular walls, or still parts of the original walls, further down and further upstream and downstream. But there's there she is sitting right there waiting to leave, and here's the other two boats which I will be following here shortly. Uh, we're heading to Niagara Falls, New York, which uh, it's not very far from, from my where I'm supposed to turn and go into Buffalo, New York, where that would be the end of uh, the Erie Canal. Uh, it it it's just so happens I was so close to uh, the Niagara Falls that it'd be kind of shame to... Uh, go right by them and not be able to and not be able to go see them so uh, I might not ever have a chance to do that again so I figured well I'm not that far away I'm ba I was basically about maybe 10 miles away from the actual falls from the canal uh, where I got off the canal to go to Niagara which is not bad and when we went to the uh, LaSalle uh, Yacht Club uh, then that only put me like five, six miles away from the Erie Canal. And I was able to take my electric scooter and go down to, to Niagara Falls and, and actually see the falls. Uh, here we are going through a, a lock. And this particular lock was different than all the other locks. Not necessarily you know, a big deal about it, but it kind of caught my attention. Uh, here we are coming through the lock, and uh, both uh, John and Scott tied up on the right side. I went to the left side. I wanted to, in case they, they left their engines running, I wanted to get away from their prop washers. So I, I went ahead and tied up, or not tied up, but go ahead and went against the wall to the left side. 
that way I wouldn't have to worry about their prop wash. And I kind of moved up a little bit, so I was kind of in between the two boats. And I was kind of holding on, so you can see this one here is pretty high. Uh, it's going to take us up real high. Uh, and like I said, this, this is different than all the other locks, as you can see sooner or later. Uh, again, I'm not going to videotape the whole thing going up, but uh, I thought I would go ahead and, and show you the difference between this lock and all the other locks that I went through. It's the only one that was like this. The, the, the other ones were not different. Uh, the other ones were basically all the same type of locks. This one was different, and I didn't realize it until they opened the gates that it was different. And what it is, is that gate that we're looking at right now is actually the middle of two locks. It's this one lock that I'm in now, and then there's another lock exactly on the other side. As soon as those doors open, you're going to see the other lock right there. So there are two locks put together. And the center door uh, of the locks controls both both locks as far as raising and lowering the water, uh, and it, it it was the only one like it. There's there so far. Uh, I know there's some uh, when I get to Chicago and down the rivers. I know there's a couple of locks, a few locks. I don't know how many I have to go through, but uh, it, it this was unusual because it was different than the rest of them. Uh, you're going to be, here we are raised already. Uh, you're going to see the gates start opening here shortly. And when they start opening, you're going to see we're going right into another lock. Straight to it. Uh, not, nothing in between or anything. So it, it was kind of unusual. It looked different. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, I guess they couldn't have made one lock because it was too high. As you can see, the first one, this first one. They raised you pretty high, and now they're raising you pretty high again. Uh, so this is the only way they could see it. And by putting two locks together, I would imagine they saved themselves quite a bit of money uh, with not having to have an extra door and, and having to have extra people to work the, the two different locks and everything. So uh, we'll be moving in to this one here shortly. Um, we're running into Niagara Falls, and uh, I'll be staying there uh Maybe a day, maybe two days. It depends on how long it takes to go down to the falls and everything. Uh, we should be... If everything works all right, we should be in Niagara Falls uh, pretty early. Uh, it's only We only travel maybe two hours at the most, three hours at the most, and we're in Niagara Falls or the city of Niagara Falls, New York. And I figured, well, if, if we get there early enough, uh, I'll take out my electric scooter and I'll run over and go see the, uh, and go see the falls. Um, and, and like I said, it, it's kind of a shame that, you know, I should go all the way over there and not be able to see them. Uh, so here we go. Uh, yeah, we'll be moving into this second lock here shortly. And then, uh, They'll raise us up, and, and then we'll be on our way. Uh, this this was a very interesting uh, place that I that I enjoyed. Uh, I met these friends here, uh, and they were actually uh, another boat that left earlier today. Uh, that was Steve and his wife left on his boat, and John and Renee are in on this boat right there in front of me and then all the way forward is uh scott and renee i mean i'm sorry scott and R rihanna all the way forward uh they're they're gonna actually raise us up and uh rihanna's gonna get off the boat because she's on a car she brought her own car she didn't come in with scott so uh once they raise us all the way up she met her there at the locks so she could help her help him with the lines and everything uh so once we're all the way up again uh she's going to get off right here at this lock and uh john will, or uh scott will continue on his own uh and uh like i said it, it's been pretty interesting and i love you know can't say enough about these guys they were friendly uh so friendly willing to help me out with everything you know anything I needed 
to do and all of that, uh, they went ahead and helped me. Uh, we even, I even, uh, I was going to make a run to Walmart when I got to Niagara Falls to pick up some oil, some outboard motor oil, because that's what I use. It's a two-stroke motor, a 90-horse Evinrude E-Tech, which is oil-injected and fuel-injected. So um, I carry uh, gallons of uh, this oil. Uh, and I was going to run to Walmart to go pick some up while, you know, while I had some time. And Scott said, no, nope, you're not you're not riding your bike. He says, it's, it's not far, but it's not close either. But uh, I'll go ahead and take you. So he went ahead and took me the following day to uh, Walmart to go pick up uh, uh, the oil. And uh, also when we got the following day, when I got back, when we, or when I got back from the falls, actually, they had already cooked out at the grill there. They had, I guess, some leftover hamburgers and sausage and, and some uh, hot dogs. So they had already thrown those up on the grill and they were ready. You know, they brought in food, uh, some uh, beans and other stuff that they brought in and it was pretty good tasted real nice so I actually had a, a free lunch there while I was sitting there at the at the yacht club uh, and like I said these guys perfect I mean can't ask for anything better than that and right now I know I haven't finished a trip but if if I had to say you know hey what what is the best time you've had so far is spending time with these guys was great uh they uh, they helped me out in any way they could, and they're, they're very nice couples. Uh, even even when we were at Mark's party, you know, even the people there, Mark and his wife, were so so nice. Also, uh, to invite a perfect stranger, you know, they didn't even know uh, to come in and and join them is really something. Uh, of course, I was kind of. Uh, interested in, in the area and this and that because I wanted to go to Niagara Falls. I just couldn't see myself coming so close to Niagara Falls and not being able to go see it. So for me, I had that, that intention in mind. Uh, for them, I mean, they, they were just uh, uh, curious as far as my trip and how I had been going and how it's been going and everything. So uh, we, we had a lot of good times. We sat down and talked a lot. Uh, we had uh, also, of course, you know, when they were over at uh, at Mark's house, they were, you know, playing games and everything. He had a pool. Uh, I think John did go into the pool. Uh, I didn't. I was just kind of sitting around because there was a lot of people there. So uh, there was a lot of people to be talking to all at once. You know, so I was kind of, you know, uh, walking around talking to different people. Uh, and they were all asking me, you know, different questions about my trip you know, and everything. So all in all, I had a great time in uh, Niagara Falls. Uh, this is day seven here. Uh, after I leave here tomorrow, if I leave tomorrow or the next day, either way, I'll be heading toward Buffalo, New York. At Buffalo, New York, that's it. That's the end of the Erie Canal. Uh, you still come out in Buffalo, New York, but you don't come out at the original place where the Erie Canal was originally built. They've kind of covered that place up already. Uh, there's a little bit of remnants of the original Erie Canal uh, downtown, and uh, you'll be able to see it uh, later on in the next video. Uh, that actually shows the actual Erie Canal where it used to be, uh, but they've blocked it off already. And, uh, there's a, a building there uh, that was excavated. They found it buried in the ground and they unexcavated it and it showed uh, some walls of, of a building that used to be there. Uh, not sure what the building was designed for, but it was built there, you know, for the Erie Canal. So that was also interesting that, you know, they preserved some kind of history of, of, the, of the area there. And uh, Buffalo is also pretty nice. Uh, it, it, it was pretty windy uh, because you're right at the uh, at at the beginning of Lake Erie, so uh, water is channeling in from uh, Lake Erie, so it it gets pretty rough. It was rough for a day, you know, for a few hours while I was going through there, 
Uh, and then I had, I actually waited a day before I left Buffalo and went into Lake Erie because it was kind of rough. Uh, the winds were blowing kind of strong and I was bouncing around quite a bit. So I, I was able to tie up at the municipal marina right in downtown Buffalo and I uh, was able to go, you know, stick around for a couple of days, but that'll be in my next video here and it'll show, you know, Buffalo itself. And that was pretty interesting. And uh, that the nice thing about this whole thing is, is it's my last day on the Erie Canal. Uh, I would have completed the 350 mile run on the Erie Canal. If I have a choice to do anything again, I think what I would do is, is I would love to make this Erie Canal run again. Uh, it was it was fun. It's very uh, very interesting to see all the small little towns. Everybody's always everybody was so friendly and everything. Uh, and uh, the buildings, you know, I I I just love to read up on the, the the old buildings. You know, when you look at them, and you know, some of them have been redone, obviously. But they always kept like a little part of the original building opened where you could still see this is the original brick. This is the, the original mason that was used on the bricks and all of that mortar. Uh, so it, it, and that's the interesting part is that they've been able to last these. I mean, some of these buildings were in the late 1800s, early 1500s, I mean, 1800s. So uh, there was also a church. That was something like 18, oh, 1823, I think it was somewhere around there. You know, it, it, and even that one was was huge for when you consider back then. You know, uh, the size of churches, the way they were built. This built this thing was built huge, uh, and it, and that was pretty interesting also. So that's kind of what I would like to do if I had to do it all over again, is to be able to to plan a trip to maybe go into Albany, New York, maybe grab a, rent a boat there somewhere and do the Erie Canal again, where you can take your time and stop at every little town because it's, it's very interesting to see and everything. Um, here we are coming into uh, the Yacht Club. Uh, these guys belong to the Yacht Club here. And they kind of, last night they called ahead and let them know that they were bringing in one of one other boat in as a guest. So. They gave me a, a slip to go into, and it was right up front. The thing is, is this was kind of like the 4th of July weekend. So there were, I mean, boats all over the place. And as you can see, and the boats moving around pretty good. I had a hard time getting into the slip. Uh, even, even with John and Scott helping me out, trying to tie up. And uh, the boat got banged up pretty good. Uh, you can see the flag there waving. It, it's also the winds didn't help either. Uh, but the other, the bad thing was, you know, you can see the wakes that it's creating by other boaters out there. And you can see me bouncing around all over the place. Uh, it took me a while, too. Uh, this this one here, I tried to hold on to this railing and I missed the rails. So uh, I start, then I hit the opposite uh, dock, which you can't see. It's on the left-hand side. And that's where I was supposed to tie up at. But I had to put a line on the other side to keep me from hitting the dock all day long. So that was pretty, like I said, it was pretty rough. You can see me struggling there, trying to uh, hold on to the boat and trying to put a line up. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I got to get to the opposite side and, and put a line uh, uh, to keep me from running into the dock. Yeah, I would, right here, I'm running right into the dock. I mean, my boat is hitting the dock pretty bad. And I'm, it's kind of getting me to the point where, hey, maybe I just need to get out of here and, and, and maybe find somewhere else to stay or maybe see if they have a different slip because it's getting hard for me to, you can see me bouncing around. It's, it's getting pretty hard just to tie up the lines here. Uh, and John and, and both John and Scott are trying to help as far as trying to grab the lines for me and, and trying to hold on to the boat from keep it from banging all over the place the way it was. Finally, we did get it. Finally, I was able to throw a line uh, on the right side on the pole there. And once I did that, that at least kept the boat from hitting the uh, uh, the dock. 
and that's kind of what I was wondering. I could always adjust the lines later where I need them to be. I just right now I just needed to stop from hitting the dock the way I was. Uh, finally got it tied up and everything. And, and once you have one line at least secured, which kind of helps you, you know, control the boat because now you can uh, uh, at least adjust your lines the way you want them. Uh, here I actually backed off is what I did. And I came in again and I tried it. So you can see the two poles on the right-hand side. I have to get at least one of the lines around one of those poles so that uh, I, I can keep from hitting the dock. And here we are coming again. I'm trying to come close enough so that I can grab a line and wrap it around that. And then once I did the back line, even though my, my bow was still going into the dock, I was able to, to when you tie up your back line like that, uh, if you put your motor in forward, real slow, not fast, put, your, put it in gear and move the, and put forward thrust on it, the boat will actually move toward the other post as, a, as a, you'll see it doing here shortly. And then once you do that, you're able to throw another line on the forward. Uh, and then uh, that's really what kept the boat, secured the boat from going back and forth and hitting the dock all the time. Didn't really damage it, but like anything else, it, it, it is going to, you know, put some scuff marks and, and all that. I mean, I already have scuff, scuff marks all over the boat from the traveling. I mean, it, she's going to need a very good cleaning when I get done. Uh, she's, uh, the hall needs to be cleaned, uh, the bottom of it where, you know, uh, a lot of sediment and stuff has been, uh, attached to the, to the boat needs to be cleaned. Uh, what I really need to do is find me a spot somewhere where there's some clear water, uh, a nice little beach where I could run it up to the beach and then, uh, give me some, get a little bucket with some soap and scrub down the hall the bottom of the hall there and get all that sediment that's been coming up from uh but so far haven't been able to find a nice little beach somewhere but i'm sure i will sooner or later uh sure one of the lakes has got to have you know some sand beaches somewhere where i can you know run it run it almost up to the beach and it the, the boat can be beached uh it's really designed to be beached it's got a an aluminum uh bar or some kind of bar or some built into the bottom of the boat so that when if you should hit the sand or whatever it's not rubbing against the fiberglass it's actually rubbing against that bar that's sitting underneath it and it goes from the bow all the way uh, about halfway down toward the boat and and that's what's protecting it from the sand so you don't get it all uh uh, scuff and and ruin your paint and all of that so uh, they're designed to be beached and you know when you draw 18 inches and you pull your motor all the way up you can practically just walk off and on from the beach you can walk on the boat walk off the boat right from the beach so that is nice uh, here we are we're still trying to tie her up uh, like i said it, it wasn't easy and i and i've already edited this film you know, uh, I took off a lot of this trying to tie up stuff, but we finally got it tied up and ready to go. And here we are. I drove my scooter down to the um, to the Niagara Falls. Now this part was taken from a uh, from a park area, and then you can see there's a platform out there you can go out to. This is the opposite side. This is by where the platform is. The park area is to the left. And uh, you can see all the falls there. Across the, the falls there is Canada. So that was really spectacular. Something nice to see. Uh, I'm so glad I did it. And uh, this, is, this was the next day. I went ahead and decided, well, you know, I've seen it. And this is the Niagara River I'm just starting off. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn around so you could see the city of uh, Niagara Falls, New York. Uh, here's uh, the marina. The marina was much calmer now. I was able to untie all the lines without bouncing all over the place. I was able to reverse and get out of the, 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 the space I was in. Well, on to Buffalo and uh, Lake Erie. Here we go.